Now then, it's an inspirational, it's inspirational, I should say, and a bestseller. The story of an American man who gets lost in a remote northern Pakistan village, only to be rescued by the villagers there. Three cups of tea tells how philanthropist Greg Mortensen pledged to return and did to build schools and educate women. But an investigation by the US-based CBS network alleges the book is full of inaccuracies. It's alleged Mortensen made up parts of the rescue story and took credit for building schools which either don't exist or were built by others. And the book has been used as inspiration for the US's plan in Afghanistan. The, the top general there, the top US general there, David Petraeus, says one thing he learned from the book was how to build relationships with Afghans. Let's uh, get some reaction from one of the countries mentioned in that book. Omar Wadach is a journalist with the independent newspaper, joins us from Islamabad in Pakistan. It's incredible, this story, isn't it? If it's true, it makes you wonder how he managed to pull the wool over all his readers' eyes. It sold several million, didn't it, this book? Yes, it actually started off quite modestly, but then afterwards when it came out in paperback and against the backdrop of a focus on Afghanistan and Pakistan, uh, that's when it took off. It became a bestseller, not just here, for example, where pirated copies are available a stone's throw away, but it was available at every single tube station, uh, airport bookshop, um, everywhere. It remained on the bestseller list for a very, very long time. Uh, it's fair to say, of course, that Mortensen is defending himself and he says that the book is true. Well, he does, yes, but, uh, but there are issues raised uh, um, about the accuracy of certain things. I mean, for example, there is a claim that he was kidnapped by the Taliban in Waziristan in 1996. Um, there were no Taliban in Waziristan in 1996. Uh, the Taliban were only formally organized in Pakistan in late 2007 under Beitullah Misu. Uh, before that, uh, uh, that several years later, there were some Afghan Taliban who came across the border, uh, but not in 1996. Uh, so that claim is demonstrably untrue. Uh, there are also questions that other people have raised, which uh, some of us don't have any way of verifying, about what year he arrived in, in that particular village. Uh, when he failed to summit K2. Uh, so it, it's very much an inspirational story, but these inaccuracies have actually left a lot of people uh, upset here in Pakistan. He was seen as a hero. He was seen as someone who did some good for Pakistan, and there are worries about whether funding for such projects for schools will continue. And also interesting because, of course, as we just mentioned, uh, the U.S. military used the book as, some, as a point of reference uh, in, in a way of dealing with relationships with local people, uh, no less than David Petraeus himself. Yes, I I indeed. Uh, but there's been considerable criticism of that beforehand. Uh, a, a number of counterterrorism experts, development experts, actually said that this was misleading, that this was somehow dealing with counterterrorism in, in any meaningful way and, and the attention that the US military was given was misguided. I mean, for example, he was only talking about a few thousand schools here at most. Uh, most people actually operate in the public sector. Uh, there are long-term issues uh, needed. I mean, there needs to be investment in teaching uh, and so on. And then there's also a question of the geography of where these schools were. I mean, for example, in Pakistan, the sure there were some schools established in militancy racked areas, but uh, not many, and, and there were many areas scarred by militancy that were not that didn't have any of these schools in operation. All right, interesting. Good to get your perspective. Thanks a lot, Amar Walich. Thanks a lot.